Is it normal to lose more hairs during certain times of the year? Does winter versus summer really make a difference? Well, it certainly does. And in today's video, we're going to tell you exactly what you can expect when it comes to seasonal hair loss. Make sure to stay tuned. Hey guys, Leon here from HairGuard.com, where people who are worried about their hair loss go to regrow their hair. Now, just before we get into the video on seasonal hair loss, if you want to get access to the hair nutrition plan, then make sure to click the link in the description. You get 21 delicious recipes designed specifically for faster, stronger hair growth. The meals are loaded with nutrients like biotin, zinc, and collagen to make hair as thick and strong as possible. So guys, human beings as a species, we've lost most of our bodily hair in our recent evolution. If you compare us to our closest species that is still around, the chimpanzee, the difference is obviously striking. The only parts of our body where we still have noticeable hair is our heads, our pubic area, and the armpit region. And for men, there is also the beard. Now, the hair follicles, regardless of where they are in the body, undergo three phases. There is the anagen phase, during which the follicle grows in size and actively grows out of the hair shaft. For scalp hairs, this lasts a few years, though in other parts of the body, it can be dramatically shorter. In the thighs, for example, it is around 50 days long. The anagen phase is followed by the catagen, during which the follicle stops growing and starts to shrink. This is a very brief stage of the hair growth cycle. At any time, only around 1% of scalp follicles are in catagen, while 90% are in the so-called growth phase or the anagen phase. The remaining 10% or so are intelligent, which is also called the resting phase. In the latter stages of this phase, the hair eventually falls out, making way for the new shaft to start growing out. So, intelligent is key to hair loss. The higher the proportion of hairs intelligent, the more hairs that you will be shedding. And a logical question to ask, does our hair growth show seasonal characteristics like so many other animals? Many mammals are known to grow a coat during winter and then shed it to some extent during the warmer months. So, could something similar be happening in humans? Could the proportion of telogen hairs vary depending on the season? Now, the two obvious environmental factors responsible for triggering this seasonality would be A, the amount of daily daylight, and B, the temperature. Now, we have research on many other species that show that these two environmental factors underlie seasonal shedding. So, let's jump into the research. The first modern study to study this phenomenon was published in the UK in 1991. It looked at 14 men between the ages of 18 to 39 over an 18-month period. The researchers found that the proportion of scalp hairs in the anagen growth phase reached a peak in March and then fell steadily to their lowest point in September. Consistent with this, the number of shed hairs peaked around August stroke September as this was the time when the fewest follicles were in anagen. Subjects shed an average of 60 hairs a day during this time, compared to around half that number in March. Hair shaft diameter was unaffected by season. A second study out of France, published a few years later, looked at a group of men who had been followed for between 8 to 14 years. The study also found consistent regular changes in hair growth. The proportions of hairs intelligent reached a maximum between August and October, which led to maximal hair loss one or two months down the line. The lowest telogen percentages were observed during the winter months, December to February. But interestingly, this study also found that some men showed no periodicity. Their hair growth cycles appeared to defy any seasonal influence. A few years later, we got one of the largest studies to date. This was published out of Switzerland and looked at 823 women who complained of hair loss. 80% of these were diagnosed with female pattern hair loss. The proportion of hairs intelligent was independent of the age of the women. But again, a seasonal effect was found. You can see in this graph the proportion of telogen hairs per month. While the overall average telogen weight was 80%, during July this peaked to nearly 25%. You can see in the graph that the lowest telogen rates were again found in the winter months, December, January, and February. The absolute lowest percentage being the beginning of February. These patterns were the same regardless if the women suffered from pattern hair loss or not. 
So guys, the literature seems to paint a more or less consistent picture. The proportion of hares intelligent peaks during the late summer, leading to maximal hair fall in the early autumn. In contrast, during the winter months of December, January and February, the proportion of hares intelligent is at its lowest. The pattern seems to be the same for both men and women, and it also appears to hold regardless if one is suffering from pattern hair loss or not. Why we humans shed hair like this isn't clear. It certainly doesn't fit into the typical pattern that you do see in other mammals. One possible reason that we shed hair after summer is finished is to protect our scalp from the sun's ultraviolet radiation, which peaks in intensity during summer. But this is obviously just speculation. The truth is, well, we really don't know. Whatever the case, the takeaway is that if you notice that you're shedding more hairs than usual around late August, September or October, then don't panic. Chances are this is a normal seasonal variation and you're not alone in experiencing this. An analysis of Google search trends conducted between 2004 and 2016 found that the number of searches for hair loss increased in the summer and fall, which is exactly what you'd expect given what we discussed earlier. Guys, have you noticed that you lose more hairs in late summer, early fall? Let us know in the comment section down below. Now I've linked to all of the studies that we've discussed today in the description below. I've also linked to an informative post on the Hair Guard blog where we discuss seasonal hair loss and give some practical tips on how to cope with it. Feel free to check that out. And to learn more about the eight ways that Will, the founder of Hair Guard, reversed his hair loss, then make sure to click the video on the screen right now.